Okay. First, I'm going to ask you a few questions about your terms of office, uh, your elections to office, and that kind of thing. Then I'm going to ask you a few questions about yourself. Okay. And uh, you can answer them in any in as brief or as long as you choose to okay. answer. Well, yeah. All right. uh, what years have you served in the Kansas House? I was elected in 1983. So, in 83? Right. Okay. So you've been here five terms. Five terms. My tenth year. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Well, now, you're, I'm trying to think how many. There are several that uh, have served more than one have, but not too many. I mean, the mm -hmm. same length, but not too many that have served longer. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'll, 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 I'll just, longer. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. there have uh, been two, I believe, that served 14 year terms. But th what we've noticed is there's a trend to women serving longer terms. The more women mm -hmm. that are elected, it seems like the longer mm -hmm. terms. And you've been in the House the whole time. Right. Okay. And uh, when did you become affiliated with the party and, and the, why did you affiliate? Probably at birth. At birth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. and my family uh, has been involved in politics forever. Right. Really? And not only politics, but the Democrat Party. My mother was a Democrat precinct committee woman, and oh. I can remember as a little girl going door to door with her and passing out literature and, mm -hmm. you know, talking to people about candidates and things like that. And my uncle also served in the House for 30 years. Oh my goodness, so who was your uncle? <coughs> Babe McKessick. Okay, and he sure. Was the dean sure. of the House for yes. a long time. Yes, yes. And then my brother, Dave McKessick, served in the House from my same district. I didn't realize this yeah. your relationship there. Well, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, and my... Do you think that influenced you to oh, want to run? Definitely, definitely. Because you were really right. I just felt, you know, politically active. And mm -hmm. when the opening, when I ran, it was an open seat. I see. And um, so my brother first was the first one to talk to me about it. And he said, why don't you think about running? And I said, oh, you're crazy. There's never been a woman elected from Wyandotte County. They're not going to put a woman in, you know. And so I thought and Is that true? It. There <coughs> had never been No, I'm country. the first woman. Mm -hmm. And I was the only woman until one was appointed for a short time. And then she is now county commissioner. She She's resigned the one who was appointed it. last year. Right. Okay. So I, I had a, another colleague <laughs> for a while. It was female. <laughs> a short while. I think she was only here for the special session, and that was it. Well, tell me a little bit more about this uh, vacant seat that you ran for the first time. Well, um, John Motorson was in, I think, three terms, and then he did not run, so that left it open. And so, you know, I wasn't challenging an incumbent. Mm -hmm. It was an open seat, and there were only two women that ended up running. Surprisingly, right. it was two women, myself and then. An oh, so you were running woman. against another woman. Right, we were both Democrats, and there there was no Republican running, I don't think, the first time. So it was just she and I, so after that. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, really what made you decide to do that? Had you been kind of thinking about prior to No, <laughs> no, not at all. Not until the, the seat became open, as I say, and there was no incumbent to, to challenge, mm -hmm. and, you know, we had always been kind of taught not to challenge the incumbents, to wait until mm -hmm. it came open, and then the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, yeah, I might as well go ahead and try what, you know, I'm not doing anything else. Okay, now, who, who, who encouraged you to do that? I'd have to say my family. Your family? Yeah, okay. yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um, did, did you have a hard election then? You just had a primary. You didn't have a general Right. Comment. Right. I don't think I did. What about your next election? Was it the next? I can't remember if her husband then ran against me also. <laughs> and he lost. But I can't remember if it was the next term or the third. It was either this my second mm -hmm. term or the third, because I thought I ran yeah. twice and it, I ran twice and it passed. Oh, you have? I see. Well, what kind of a campaign did you wage? What type of strategies did you do? Door, door to door. Door to door. And uh, luckily, she fell and sprained her ankle, so she couldn't go door to door. 
and she had to do all of hers by telephoning, you know, whatever she could, and so I just kind of took off with it, going door to door, and that was my, I guess, strategy, if you want to call it that. <laughs> well, that's uh, an unusual <laughs> uh, history there of your running. Well, who... Who worked for you? Did you have some other people that went door to door with you that helped Just you do my mailing? My ex husband. Just your. Yeah, and my family helped with the mailings. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I I really didn't have any other campaign workers the first mm -hmm. time. Just basically my family. Did you ha have any trouble raising funds, or did you even do much with that? Uh, I didn't have a fundraiser. Um, it was just. No, not really. I didn't. I guess I wasn't really worried about <laughs> the money because I was going door to door. Uh -huh. And uh, did you use the media at all? Did you advertise on television? Or no, newspapers? just newspaper. Uh -huh. Just the newspaper. Did, so. did any of them endorse you or support you in any of your five elections? The you mean the newspapers? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I gosh, I can't remember now, you know, the first time if they endorsed her or me. I can't, really can't remember. The primary, that would probably be unusual to have endorsed either one. Yeah, I don't think they did. I really don't think they did. Well, now, you, you said that uh, your, you said it was your grandfather? No, my uncle. Your uncle. In the house. Uh -huh. What district? He was He was from a different part of the state. Oh, no, same <coughs> county. Different same district. county. That's okay. I couldn't remember yeah. where he yeah. All right. Did he help you in your campaigning? Then? No, he was already. His health was bad by that so time, and he was in a nursing home. So, see, so there was no, no. real tie in there. No. Or anything. Uh, how close did your district border or? No, no, not, okay. not ours. Uh -uh. Same county, like I say, and Wyandotte County is pretty small geographically, so, you know, you could drive five minutes and be in his district, but... Mm -hmm. I was wondering if the media, of course, you would do a different last name, they yeah. wouldn't... Although so when I was going door to door, you know, I, t I told a lot of people that my uncle served in the house, and everybody knew him because he'd been there for so long. So that was a good, and I ran with Mary Jane McKessick Johnson, my maiden name. I used oh, you it. Did. Okay, my now that's important. Uh -huh. uh, materials. Uh -huh. I used my maiden name, and of course, having him and well, and my brother in the legislature, that name was familiar. He was in there at that time. Well, I guess it was your brother. Where was he right. from? St. Wyandotte County. He was also. <laughs> 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 Were any of? I mean. Was your brother from what district in Wyandotte County? Well, he served in the same legislative district. As you, as you were. Right, right. but by this time he was judge. See, he okay. ran for judge then and got that, and that's when John Motorson came in for three terms. And then when I he see. quit, I ran for the open seat. So he'd been out for like six years. Right. right. Well, that's very interesting, <laughs> very unusual. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you think that had any bearing on the on your election? I think it did. I think it I, yeah, I really recognition do. Sure, because, you know, like I say, my brother had that district, and, you know, people have a tendency not to think in the current. They mm -hmm. think more in the past, so. Was your name on the ballot? Uh, how did it appear on the ballot? No, it wasn't. McKessick was not on the ballot. It was just on my campaign material. So it would have to, people would have had to remember that. Right, right. right. Okay. Uh, can you describe your district a little bit? Uh, you say it's in Wyandotte County. What What do the people do that live in your district? What I would kind of say industry it's, do you have? it's pretty much working, the working class people. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lot of industry in Wyandotte County, of course, General Motors. We have a lot of just, um, I just say working class people. Mm -hmm. Are these the kind of issues they were most interested in in your campaign then? Or? Um, well, I, the one issue I ran on was the lemon law. I, I thought we needed the lemon law in Kansas, and so that was my big issue. It mm -hmm. took three years to get passed, but <laughs> <laughs> it gave me something to, uh, and, and I, I think that was when I campaigned against the severance tax. That was yes. around at that time, yeah. too. 
So I was opposed to it and working more for consumer-oriented type mm -hmm. legislation. Yeah, I see. Well, now, uh, were there other issues that uh, were people were concerned about well, in, I, in your subsequent election? Yeah, I just have to say then, from then on, it became the, the taxes was the main, you know, because our taxes were going up and up every year. So I would just... So even the, it had started even back then. Right. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what kind of issues have you worked on while you were here during your five years? Well, having also worked in the treasurer's office as at the same time as being in the legislature. In other words, when I leave the legislature, I work in the treasurer's oh, office. I didn't know it, yeah. And I've worked there for 10 years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that gave me a lot of experience, you know, in working with um, the taxpayers, hearing mm -hmm. their concerns there in the treasurer's office, and especially since reappraisal went through all the problems with yeah filling out the protest forms and having the hearings and, you know, just hearing their problems there, I could pick up on things that needed to be changed, so. Interesting. Now, that is an interesting thing. I didn't realize you, you, uh, you worked there, but that would give you a lot of insight. Yeah, it really does. It really From does. across the state, actually. Right. Well, now, um, I'm going to get back to that, but uh, what committees, then, have you served on? Um, pretty much elections, local government, and commercial and financial institutions. Okay, you didn't serve on any tax committees? No, I haven't served on the tax committee yet. And you've been pretty steady in those committees. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, have you had any leadership positions on those committees? Uh, well, right now I'm chairing the House Local Government Committee, and that was last year, 91 and 92. Mm -hmm. So before that, I was ranking minority member on the local government committee, and I think I, I got that during my second term was when I started as ranking minority member. So now, just backing up a little bit to the issues, there are, some people think there are men's issues and women's issues and so forth, uh, and I don't know how you feel about that. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like you have a position on women's issues? Have you taken a position? No. Or? How do you see that whole idea that some issues are women's issues? I've, I've often wondered about that myself because I haven't really had that much, you know, experience or knowledge of men versus women's issues. Mm -hmm. And it's just recently that we started talking about the children's initiative. So that's, mm -hmm. you know, a specialized area that we've dealt with. But previous to that, I can't say that I've okay. really had anybody say, oh, this is a woman's uh -huh. issue, you know, we really need to get this through. I just haven't had that. So you don't feel really like you were elected by women to deal no. with women's issues in any no. respect? No. Uh, if you could put a title on yourself, uh, and you can do this, I, I don't like the title for anybody. Are you a, a conservative, a liberal, or somewhere in between, or how would you? I'd have to say you? somewhere in between. Okay. <laughs> Some people feel very yeah. strongly about that. No, I really don't. Yeah. Okay, when you were a freshman ten years ago, did you have a mentor or someone that kind of helped you get the right seat and on the right committees and things like that? Um, yeah, I'd probably have to say, and it was a man from Wyandotte County, uh, Herman Dillon, who had been here for years, who was a friend of my uncle's when Babe was in the legislature. and. Uh, you know, I know he helped Babe, and Babe helped Herman when he first came to the legislature. So he, you know, I felt like I could go to him and, and say, you know, what is this book? <laughs> what am I supposed to be looking for in this book? What is general orders, you know? And so I'd have to say he probably helped me a lot with yeah. finding my way around. And, you know. A lot of people have a mentor or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you really have only served on those three committees. I mean, other people have moved around a lot. Um, I've, I can only remember I ha was on insurance for two years, and I couldn't stand that because I thought it was so dominated by the insurance industry I got off of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was it. Mm -hmm. That's the only other committee I've been on. Okay, what, uh, as far as originating any leg legislation, have you introduced and sponsored bills and what? bills in particular? 
Like, you mean this session? Well, for the uh, last 10 years, actually. Well, like I said earlier, I started out with the Lemon Law, which mm -hmm. was a consumer bill, and it needs it needs to have some changes done to it, and I just haven't had time this year since I became chairman of local government. And mm -hmm. I don't know, it seems after probably the first three years then I started turning my attention towards the tax problems and you know, trying to come up with some solutions on that and trying to introduce bills to relieve the tax burden, I guess you'd say. And, and since then, really working on reappraisal and the protests and the hearings and trying to make that system flow more easily so people don't, aren't repeating the same thing they did the year before and just working on types of bills like that. Now, uh, the one, what was that your third year you said that that was passed? Well, it took three years to get passed. Oh, you yeah. introduced it right away? Right. right. Yeah. yeah. And then it was passed your third year. Uh -huh. uh, would, would you say that's one of your vivid memories, or if you could... Oh, yeah. What kind of... I was <laughs> scared to death. Okay. I mean, scared to death. Here I was before the Judiciary Committee, and I thought, what, you know, what am I doing here? All these attorneys. I've only had six years of junior college, so I was like, they're just going to ask me all these questions. And so I talked to my brother, who's a judge, and I said, you know what, what am I doing? You know, he said, you'll do fine, just use your common sense. He said, just whenever you feel, you know, like you're getting nervous or something, he said, just stop and think and use your common sense. So that's basically what I've done, you know, ever since then. But, yeah, that was a very vivid memory. That usually is everybody's oh. first bill or first one they carry. Uh, uh, is there anything else you can recall that was particularly good, a uh, memorable victory or defeat or, or even the, the uh, somewhere in between there, but just something you remember really well? Mm -hmm. That's probably my most, you know, had the most impact. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked on a couple of local issues mm -hmm. that, you know, may have passed or not passed it. I felt bad about at the time, but now you get over it, you know, later, but it's really nothing that stands out. Okay. Um, when you first, I'm trying to remember, when you first uh, came here, how many women were in the house? I'm thinking it was like 24. Okay. I have it written down, but right I don't have all my notes with me. Well, it's up to, uh, well, it's 30, uh, let's see, 30. 38 or 36, 36. I believe, yeah. yeah, there are nine in the Senate, we have 45 total. Uh -huh. um, can you see a difference in, in women's effectiveness or what women are doing in the legislature yes. during the 10 years you've been here? Yeah, I think so, what because are those differences? we didn't have any leader, any women in leadership when I started, and now we do, uh -huh. and I think that makes a big difference. I, sometimes men don't understand, you know, what some certain problems that women have in there. When you've got a woman you can go talk to, it just to me makes such a difference. Mm -hmm. So, Do you think women are more effective in the legislature now that there are more of them? Yeah, I really do. Because of, of that, but um, is there any other reason you can think of? No, I don't know what it is. I just think that it just ha lends a balance, I guess you'd say. You know, to where you're not just sitting there listening to men all the time. Mm -hmm. and I start to all to sound the same after a while. You know, it sounds good every <laughs> once in a while to have a woman down there <coughs> talking. So, well, now the um, <coughs> the year that, that Kansas began electing more women was 1974. Prior to that year, we found that there were only four women in the House and Senate in any one year. And most years, there weren't four. There was several or none, you know, uh -huh. one or two, uh -huh. but that's the most. Uh, in, in 74, this all changed when they elected eight uh, in the House, and then in the Senate that changed, there was only one in the Senate until 80, uh -huh. but um, what's happened? Because every year since those two years, uh, increasing numbers of women have been elected. Can you speculate what happened in 74 around that date? No, not really. <laughs> I really can't. Um, I 
guess just after women started becoming elected, then other women saw that. They kind and of said, Yeah, thing. hey, you know, maybe I, if they had an issue they were interested in, they could say, well, maybe I could run on this, and, you know, she okay. did it. Why can't I? So. Well, now, your, your uncle, Baby Kissy, um, when you first ran, how did he feel about a woman being in the house? I mean, did he give you any advice? No, because, like I say, he, he was already that. ill well, 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 well. by then. I think he left the legislature in 78, if I remember mm -hmm. right. And so then, you know, I, we were away. At, my ex-husband was in college, so I didn't really see oh. him that much. We were living in a different city and county. It's still in Kansas, but mm -hmm. not. So I really, you know, didn't have that much communication mm -hmm. with him. Okay. And my brother was in then, and I'm sure he thought it was <laughs> good to have women in. I mean, he, I mean, he, did he yeah, I mean, he that? was the one that got me to run, uh -huh. you know, so I know that he, he was positive about women being in the legislature. Well, it seems like Kansas is ahead of other states, too, yeah. as far as elected women, yeah. both up to state and uh, to Congress and, and the Senate. Uh, we're the only state with a, a yeah. woman governor and a woman congresswoman and a woman okay. senator. And um, there are several other records we've set. Mm -hmm. It's just kind of interesting trying to figure out why. Yeah. Why Kansas? Yeah. Why not another state? Oh, yeah. but, that's really strange. Uh, now, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself, and we'll try to tie in with these other relatives that were in the house. Too. Okay. Are you native of Kansas? You said you've lived here all your life, yes. so I assume you're native. Yes, yes. Uh, where were you born, and where did you grow up? Flyback County. Okay, Kansas, same City, place. Kansas, same place. Okay. Uh, what type of place did you live in when you were uh, in the country or um, no, in, in the, the city? city? Yeah. And what schools did you attend? Uh, St. John the Baptist grade school. I went to Ward High School my freshman year, and then my brother again <laughs> was teaching high school. This is before he became judge at Wyandot, which was just right up the street from where we lived. Of course, Ward was just as close, but he said, so why don't you go to Wyandotte, you know? I think he just wanted some company or something. But anyhow, I went to Wyandotte then my sophomore, junior, and senior year and graduated from Wyandotte. What year did you graduate? Seventy. Seventy. Yeah. Okay. What kind of activities did you participate in while you were in both grade school and high school? Um, really, a few sports in grade school. Um, High school, more like pep club and things mm -hmm. like that. Nothing really serious. I was having too much fun. <laughs> <laughs> did you debate? Were you no, no. Well, did you do any, and were there any activities that you think helped you or maybe made you more interested in the legislative process or politics? No, or no I would say that was more, you know, my family life at home. Um, high school really didn't have anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I hated government in high school. <laughs> I hated, yeah, I just hated my government classes. I thought, what is this? Who cares about this stuff, you know? <laughs> so, well, uh, how did your parents, are they still living and how did they feel about your... Uh, my father passed away a year ago. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he was in a nursing home too. And he was Babe's brother. Oh. But, um, he, uh, I don't know really what he thought about it. I think, you know, they just thought it was natural because really? of being so involved in the past with politics. So mm -hmm. I think they just thought it was a natural thing to do. Well, now, did you work in your brother's campaign then? Uh-huh. Okay, so oh, yeah. you, had, you had had some experience oh, yes. in the campaign. Oh, yes, yes, definitely. Even and in the same district. Right. Mm -hmm. And my other brother was all, had also run for office for oh, really? at various times for various things, and hmm. um, he was on the BPU board in Kansas City, Kansas, for a while. And I worked on I don't know how many campaigns for oh, him. He see. didn't always win. <laughs> <laughs> so but Dave and I have always won. Tony's kind of he's kind of big mouth and like he says what he thinks, you know, where we're more reserved and think about what we're going to say, he just says it. Well, all three of you did. Yeah. That is very unusual. Yeah. I don't think I've run into that with anyone yeah. else. Do you have any other brothers or sisters? In I have one other a yes. sister. <laughs> is she uh, running for anything? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> well, how close are you in age with your brothers? Um, 
actually my brothers are like 10 years older than I am. Oh. And then I came along then my sister's four years younger. So. Uh -huh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Neither, and your mother, how did she, uh, did she help you? Oh, yes. yes she was a big on uh, mailers, oh, and big help on mailers, mm -hmm. and, you know, always lending support and, and things. And I, you know, like I say, I just think they both thought it was the natural thing to do. They probably didn't think about it at all. No, not, not really. They were used to <laughs> Worried about whether we were going to win or not. Yeah. You know? yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, what did your father do? Yeah. He worked for the Board of Public Utilities. Oh. Did your mother work? Uh -huh. And she worked for uh, the city and county government both. Mm -hmm. okay. so. uh, now you mentioned you graduated from high there? school from Rhinot. Mm -hmm. Where did you go to college? You said something like I, I, I've only had six years of KCK JUCO. Oh. So, and that was like six years ago. It was way after I graduated. What, what did you study there? I took um, English composition and sociology because those are my two best classes in high school that I did real well in. So I thought, well, that'll be easy, you know. And I got there and I was getting F's on the day. I forgot how to study, you know. <laughs> but I ended up with an A and a B, surprisingly. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was the extent of my... <laughs> Well, that's <laughs> after that, I thought, woo, why am I doing this? This is an education, too, so yeah. uh, you probably got a lot there. Yeah. Uh, now, have you belonged to any organizations, <coughs> either during high school or since you graduated, that uh, maybe helped you become interested or, or more knowledgeable about? Yeah, probably classes? just the, the Democrat clubs in Wyandotte County. I was active in several of those, okay. and, you know, a couple of civic clubs. Now, yeah. how, at what what did you become active in the Democratic Party? What age well, or how? That was since birth. <laughs> I mean, I had, you know, I had to go door to door when I was this high, so. <laughs> I can't ever remember not mm -hmm. being That's involved, so. Yeah. Well, I have to say from birth. Yeah. <laughs> and you held, um, what kind of office? I was a precinct committee woman okay. before I was elected to the legislature, and that was the only other elected. And your mother had done that, you right. said, too. Right. Uh -huh. did, did, did she do that? How, how much prior to your doing that? To be in that well, she did it as long as I can remember. Oh, you she know, did so, it for right, been years. A precinct woman. Right, and with my uncle being in the legislature, you know, I think that's also sure. how she became so involved in it and working for city and county government too so uh, now you mentioned working in the treasurer's office what did you do before that have you had any other jobs i worked or uh, yeah five years for the city in the license department where they um local government experience. right right um, and really that's basically the only, I, I've either worked for the city or county, and I worked for the school district one summer when I first graduated as a teacher's aide, but that was my extent with the school mm -hmm. district, but yeah, just really. And then when you came uh, into the legislature, you started working in the state treasurer's office in the off time or when the session Right, was county off. treasurer's office. Oh, the county yeah. treasurer's office. Oh, I Not the state. Okay, I'm County sorry. treasurer's office. Oh, yes, and you're really down in the trenches yes. where there's a lot of yeah. What did you do in the county treasurer's office? Uh, mainly just working with the taxpayers, you know, waiting on the uh, customers when they came in, answering phones. So uh, you really had a lot of one-on-one. -on -one right, with right. To find out what their problems were. Yeah. That's an interesting job to yeah. bring back to, you know, bring information back to the yeah. legislature. Yeah, it really is. Uh, how old were you when you were first elected to serve? 30. Okay. My tenth year, I'll be you're, forty. So. You're probably one of the. You might be one of the younger ones at that time mm -hmm. period. Yeah, I think I was. Uh, because there, there aren't too many. Of them. I don't know when Diane. Um, I think she came in the same time I did. Juris did. Did she? Yeah. I, it was I, either there or right, right after. But Sharon then, Hess might have been the youngest. <laughs> We haven't really established for sure uh -huh. on that, but it seems like uh -huh. that there were one or two that, that were, I can't remember, she was 22 or 3 when uh -huh. she was first selected, so uh -huh. that, I don't know. Yeah. Um, okay, now, 
I'm, I want to get back to your occupations. Um, what do you plan to do if you ever do leave the legislature? Do you have any? I really don't have any plans. Okay. <laughs> I really don't. I don't plan on leaving the okay. legislature. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Okay. Um, now I know you, you did get married last year during uh -huh. this session. I'm the in the house. Of Tom. Uh -huh. I, I was out of town, so I couldn't uh -huh. come. But I I remember Tom and, and Sloan talking about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you tell me a little? That's definitely kind of a historic occasion. Well, again, my that was my brother's fault. Um, I hate to keep bringing him up. He's probably going to kill me if he ever hears this, but. He, you know, I said, Dave, why don't we just come down to your, your co little courtroom there in Wyandotte County and you can just marry us on Valentine's Day in your little courtroom, you know, because I thought I'll have all my friends from the county come down. And so I called him about it. And he, I said, keep your afternoon open on Valentine's Day for me, you know, because he gets all kinds of requests. He said, well, why don't we do it up in the house chambers? <laughs> so I said, well... I don't know. I said, I guess I, I wouldn't be opposed to it as long as we didn't do it during business hours. You know, but I, I thought it'd be kind of neat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I thought I could do some things with the chambers to make it look pretty, you mm -hmm. know, not church-like, but <laughs> kind of sacred, because it is a sacred place. Mm -hmm. So we, um, I talked to leadership and a few to make sure that I wasn't going to be like making the taxpayers mad because I was doing this or something. I ran up by them, you know, and I could just see it, you know, taking over the headlines or something. And I didn't want the press to get involved. I just wanted to have a nice little wedding in the chambers. Well, I kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And jeez, you know, I should have just done it in my brother's courtroom like I wanted to. But um, that's how it ended up here. Oh, for goodness sake. Well, is that the first time anyone's been married in the chambers like that? Or? I think so, in the House. Yeah. I think I in the Senate, they have had a couple oh, marriages, have they? I guess. Well, Gus Bogina was married in the Senate okay. chambers. Okay, so they didn't miss that. And I, don't, I don't, haven't heard of anyone in the House chambers, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I guess that's history making. Yes, yeah, certainly, <laughs> especially, you know, maybe for a woman uh, yeah, yeah. in the House. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any children? Two daughters. Two daughters, mm -hmm. okay. And where are they right now? Um, Heather's, and she's a junior at Bethany College in Lindsburg. And Jennifer's a junior at Smoky Valley High School in Lindsburg. She's living with her father during the school year and comes home during the summer. Let's see. And uh, they're uh, 16 and 20. Sixteen. Well, do you get to see them very often during the session? No, not really. Um, you know, with them being in Lindsburg, it's about a two and a half, three hour drive from Topeka, so mm -hmm. we really don't see each other. And plus, they're into sports and activities with school, so I, we probably only see each other once a month, maybe, during mm -hmm. the session. Talk on the phone every night, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that you live here in Topeka, you don't. No, I commute. Oh, you do I'm commute? commuting, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Uh huh. How long a drive is it? About an hour. Is it? It's well, not bad. Huh, it really isn't. So. Uh, have you always done that, or is this um, No, for a couple of years I lived here in mm -hmm. Topeka, or got a place, but um, I haven't done that for a while. It just seems like it, it costs more to live here than it did to drive back and forth, so I decided to go back to driving back and forth. Well, uh, do you feel like that being in the legislature has been a sacrifice for you and your family in any way? No. Um, no, I can't really say that it has. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the benefits then? So what? What are the benefits that you've derived from, from being in the legislature? Uh -huh. Well, I can get bills passed yeah. now. <laughs> you know, I can make laws. Do you think it's, um, it's influenced your, your two children? Oh, yeah. Definitely. In what ways do you think they uh, well, that, you know, they said whenever they would have government class in school, they'd always come home and say, Mom, I was the only one that knew the answers to all the <laughs> government questions. I knew all the terms and how long they were, and at election time, you know, they knew the candidates. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of gave them, they loved that, being able to answer things that nobody else knew, <laughs> you know. And, uh, well, you know, I think it's beneficial to them. 
I really do. Uh, how, how do you think it's changed the way people see you, the way people treat you? Do you think being in the legislature has affected that? No, I don't know. Not really, because I've tried to stay the same person. Mm -hmm. And I think people can see that, you know. You, you're doing the same kind of work that you want in the right, legislature. Right, right. I haven't really changed anything mm -hmm. other than having to drive a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm putting a lot of miles on Right. Um, what do you think, um, how do you think that you'll look back on this and say, oh, I did this, this for the state. What, what kind of accomplishments <laughs> do you see? After 10 years, you mm -hmm. probably have some idea of what, yeah. what you're trying to do, what, what you may do to contribute to the state. Well, I think that really my other job had more of an influence, you know, as to what I did in the later years, you know, in the more recent years. So really, I think it's good that I had a job that worked with the public so that I could talk to them on a daily basis. I mean, I would from May to December, that's all I do is talk to taxpayers. So, in a way, that had a big, you know, influence on what I was going to do when the session came, what bills I would introduce. And yeah. So that was good, you know. Mm -hmm. really, really input. Yeah. Input contact with your work. Right. How many people in, in your job, how many people a day would you say you see and talk to about taxpayers? Gosh. Um, well, since reappraisal, I mean, I help them with their protests. So the first year that went through, we had like 5,000, oh, you know, goodness. protest files. Oh, my goodness. And it was just myself and three other people that mm. talked to them. I mean, we held classes out in the hallway to tell people how to do this. So now, did you, did you find that people blamed you for the tax problems then? Or, I mean, yeah. since you were kind of both Yes, they still not? do. And do I mean, through, it's through the education that we we need to educate people because they don't realize that most of that money is from the locals, you know, from the city commissioners and county. And you have to kind of turn their thinking around and say, now look, this is where they're setting the mill levies. You know, you need to talk to these people. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but they back, you know, would back off. They just and didn't could you feel do that? from the treasurer's mm -hmm. officer in the county, sure. they would accept it from there that, well, no, we need to right. talk to these school board people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That would be, that would be the whole county, though. It wouldn't just be your legislative district that would come and right. see us and say, you'd have a lot of contact with voters. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every day. Sure do. Yeah. <laughs> well, you aren't working there at all while you're in no. session. Right? No. You wait totally right. until the session is over. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's kind of nice to go. Yeah, never paid by both. You know, mm -hmm. always taken off the payroll to come here or vice mm -hmm. versa. So, well, some people try to sort of, you know, do a little bit, but that doesn't yeah. like it would work real well. Yeah. Um, do you think in the ten years uh, since you've been here that the political expectations of others for women and, and maybe the political expectations of women themselves have changed? Can you, can you trace a change in that ten years? Oh, I, yeah, I think so. Um, I know myself, you know, just talking to other women who serve on different things locally, you know, they see me as, I don't want to say a mentor, but they, they think that they can move up. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'd have to say, yes. Mm -hmm. it's, it now, well, you, you might be one of the early, there weren't too many women committee chairmen prior to last year. There were a few in the Senate, I believe, but I don't think there were very many in the House. Yeah. We'll have to check that out yeah. and see if you weren't one of them. I think I'm the first woman to chair local government. I'll bet you that's know, I was true. trying to think about that myself, yeah. and I bet I am. Yeah. I'm I'm well, um, did you t have you taken part in any formal or even informal <laughs> coalitions or the Women's Caucus or anything like that? No. Okay. I know some, there are some women that, that I don't know how often they're meeting this yeah. session, but they, yeah. they met a few times last session. Yeah. I may have gone to one meeting, but... Mm -hmm. But you don't really yeah. participate in... Uh -uh. I don't even know I don't even think they're, they're that active, uh -huh. you know. Maybe if they got real active or something, and mm -hmm. you know, there were some issues I cared about, I'd get on it, but... Mm -hmm. I don't really think they're getting much. Mm -hmm. Well, I probably do. <laughs> yeah, right now. 
Uh, is there anything I haven't asked you about that you would like to include in this interview? No, not really. I think that pretty much covers it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You've given me a lot of information today. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, we probably have a lot of firsts for people, and you'll probably have some of those with your wedding in your yeah. house chambers, and maybe as um, the chairman of that thing. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm thinking it is because. Well, I know it is in the last yeah, 10 years, and I yeah. can't think that before yeah, I mean, that there was. Right, right, right. How many people came to your wedding? I don't know that. I think a couple hundred, because we had all the seats filled on the half floor, and we had a lot of people standing in the aisles and across the back, so I'm thinking a couple hundred. Mm -hmm. That was that on a Saturday? Or no, it was a Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Thursday evening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you had to clean up all your decorations. <laughs> oh gosh, that was a mess. <laughs> oh.